The only thing difference between these beers is the yeast strain utilized. That to me is magical. Whoa. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I am back here in central Massachusetts at the mothership here in Charlton. If you are new here to the channel, we invite you to subscribe below. We want to welcome you to our house and we can only have you in our house if you subscribe. So do us a favor. Today we're taking a look at what we call our data set series. This series was created for us to explore and understand and learn about the most modern cutting edge yeasts available to us on the market today, while also comparing those yeasts to yeasts that we're familiar with and yeasts that are more traditional. So this is a really exciting series. And the cool thing about this one is that the beers essentially stay the same. The malt bill, the hop bill and the recipe for each of these beers is the same with a few small differences for a few specific yeasts. So I haven't had the luxury of trying all these together yet. So we're going to experience this together for the first time right here, right now. We have future batches that are coming and I believe this series is going to go through to number eight. And we have a little surprise for you at the end, which will be data set number six, which has not been packaged yet, which I'll try for us on camera. And hopefully by the time this video comes out, you guys can enjoy it with me. All right, data set number one. Ooh, that always, that, what time is it? Not even noon yet, cracking a can. So data set number one is our control. Pretty simple, straightforward pale malt bill paired with our favorite Juicy American Hops, which we selected last autumn in Yakima. This, this guy here, data set number one, utilizes our classic house yeast. So proprietary blend of yeast that we have formulated here at Treehouse over many, many, many years of effort to try to design something that's unique and delicious. <laughs> I haven't had our beer in like a month, dude. That tastes so good. Yeah, I mean, beautiful tropical fruit, super soft, pillowy mouthfeel. Everything you love about our beer is in this beer right now, data set number one. From here on out, we'll compare everything to this moving forward and see what it reveals. Number two is actually kind of aggressively a leap from what we're accustomed to. Uh, it uses what's called a thialized yeast strain. There's a relative amount of complexity to these thialized strains, but I'll try to explain it as simply as I possibly can. Basically, the constituents of beer contain precursors to thiols that uh, are aromatic compounds that are aggressively tropical and fruity. And what the thialized yeast strain does is it converts those precursors into what's called free thiols, which makes the beer ridiculously fruity and aromatic. We've never used this type of yeast strain before. And for this particular batch, we did do what's called some mash hopping because the, the thialized yeast strain manufacturer recommends doing so because the more of those precursors that you have in your wort, the greater biotransformation takes place and the more aromatics you have in the finished beer. So we did mash hop this beer. It is a difference in process from the other beers, but I think doing so didn't take away from the process. It was very similar to that first batch. So comparing the two is, is fair to do so. Already the color is a hair lighter. Uh, turbidity looks to be about the same, but interestingly, very, very similar process that results in a beer that is slightly more opaque and I would say slightly hazier than the control batch. Whoa! Ton of uh, like white wine, tropical fruit, sort of earthy citrus grassy notes going on. Definitely get some like really, really pungent grapefruit and passion fruit. Wow, that is juicy. Juicy but dry. Interesting, I think the primary difference that I get here is maybe a touch more aromatic, uh, varied tropical fruit, and more of that sort of New Zealand style Sauvignon Blanc notes going on, but it's much, much drier. It finishes kind of bitter on the back end, and it doesn't have that classic softness that we're accustomed to, 
But man, if that's not an interesting beer, I'm not sure what is. <laughs> it's fine, legs. We're not making a video or anything. It's totally fine. You think you can make that thing any louder? <laughs> All right, moving on to data set number three. Data set number three utilizes a classic English yeast strain that uh, we have utilized here in the past at Treehouse but not all that often. So again, in comparing yeast strains across a similar process, we thought including this yeast strain would be a good idea. Let's see how it compares, not only visually, but aromatically and flavor-wise as well. Ooh, that guy might even be the haziest of the bunch so far. Man, these beers just look so appetizing. Keep in mind too that this experiment, there's, there's a challenge of comparing them on the same timeline. These beers were brewed at slightly different times, with obviously data set number one being the oldest, and moving on to data set number five, which is the newest. Uh, turbidity levels can be affected over time, and so that could contribute to what we're seeing in front of us as well. But data set number three appears to be even more hazy. Uh, beautiful golden yellow color with a good amount of haze to it. Very, all these beers look super appetizing. Gonna dive right in. Yeah, again, classic. This one's very rounded, kind of mango, sweet tropical fruit, but even on the nose, you get that, it's almost like a sweet sugar characteristic that uh, you can tell that the mouthfeel on this beer is gonna be rich and full. Oh, wow. Whew. Just good. Uh, beautiful, rounded, full flavor profile, pretty similar to our house strain, to be honest and just drinking beautifully. Data set number three. Moving on to number four. Number four is another thialized yeast strain. It's slightly different and it's actually based on the base yeast strain that's utilized in data set number five. So uh, when working with the manufacturer, we got those backwards on the brew schedule. We had wished to brew number five as number four, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Let's dive right into it. Whoa. That one has a weird aroma. This one looks a little on the clearer side of things as well. Uh, visually, to me, at least in the flesh right now, it looks a lot more orange without as much haze pouring into the glass. But the aroma is pretty weird. I'm having a hard time describing it. It's almost like kind of sweet tarty. It, it has kind of a candied-like effect to it. Weird. <laughs> I mean, no, it's, we it's weird in a good way. It almost tastes like Sauvignon Blanc. Like, this tastes like white wine to me. It has this really, really potent grape note to it that is very surprising given the hop bill that's utilized in this beer. It tastes super interesting and unique. Definitely a standout. Once again, keep in mind, exceptionally similar process. The only thing difference between these beers is the yeast strain utilized. That to me is magical. When I drink these beers and as a brewer, I just get so excited to know that through the magic of yeast, you can have such a different outcome with the same process. And this guy is a great example of that. Whoa, that is interesting. And not only is it weird, it's actually really tasty and delicious. All right, moving on to number five. Number five is a classic European yeast strain that was sold to us as a phenomenal maker of hazy IPA. Who knows? There's only one way to find out. Looks relatively similar to, I would say the third one. Perhaps, yeah, pretty similar, uh, all things considered, aromatically. Oh, that's nice. Super rich, rounded. Ooh, that might be my favorite of the bunch. Super rich tropical fruit, citrus, mango, passion fruit. 
full mouthfeel, sweet, but it, the sweetness kind of carries the fruit character and then it finishes dry. This is nice. Data set number six? Oh, this guy. Andrew Pillsbury, what's up, buddy? Right on, thank you. Those look good. Look at this, how about this? Why don't we just get after that, huh? How about that? <laughs> Why not? Woo! This is how we should serve beer in the tap room. Hey, you guys want a, you guys want a tiku? No, you want a pitcher. All right, here we go. I actually wasn't prepared to talk about number six, and I don't necessarily remember what it was. I believe it was brewed with Kvike yeast. Uh, Kvike yeast is a, it's like a Norwegian farmhouse strain that's notoriously flexible. Uh, it will perform well across the temperature range and, and it will give you some incredibly fruity esters at high temperature. We've never utilized it here in IPA. Uh, data set number six is our first example of doing so. Right out of the gate, I can tell that hopefully this shows up on camera. This one is much darker and more orange than the beers that we've become accustomed to in this series so far. And let's see how it differs. I do believe we fermented this on the high end. Uh, we allowed it to free rise, which is relatively typical of Kvike yeast. And let's see what we got. Oh, that's kind of, that's kind of rustic. Interesting, got some like, really sweet orange peel, sort of clementine thing going on. Not overly tropical, lots of citrus, little bit uh, uh, unrefined around the edges. Wow. Yeah, that's really different. Got some like pear, kind of like lemon, maybe some, uh, uh, like orange marmalade tea going on. This is really different and really interesting. I'd be curious to see where we can take a yeast like this with more experience uh, and more, in, more in, inquisition. If you had to pick one. Great question. I like number five. Number five really popped for me. Uh, number one I'm so familiar with that I don't think that I would choose it out of the list. But if I had to pick a favorite of these six so far, it would definitely be numbers three and number five. Uh, number four wins the most interesting award. Number two wins the most undistinguished. I guess it's kind of ordinary, even though it's very delicious. And then number six is pretty wildly different than the rest. And I enjoyed it, but I'm not sure that I would choose it as my favorite. So to answer your question, number five followed by number three. All right guys, so that was a quick run through data set. This is a fun project where we hope you guys enjoy being taken along for the ride and the insight behind how these beers were crafted. For me personally, having the control of a similar process with different yeasts is utterly fascinating and interesting as a drinker. We're having a ton of fun with it. We hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Be good to each other.